in order to understand how Marlow contracts work, we need to understand a little bit about how the Cardano blockchain works. So the Cardano blockchain is a so-called UTXO chain. It uses the UTXO model, where UTXO stands for unspent transaction output. So as the name suggests, UTXOs are outputs of transactions that haven't yet been spent. And a transaction has inputs and outputs. Inputs are unspent transaction outputs, UTXOs, and outputs are new UTXOs. So a transaction consumes UTXOs. So afterwards, they are no longer unspent. They now have been spent and produces new ones. So in this picture here, we can see an example. So in the beginning, there are two UTXOs, one belonging to Alice, one belonging to Bob. Then we have transaction one with one input consuming the UTXO that belongs to Alice. So afterwards, that UTXO is no longer unspent, is no longer a UTXO. And transaction one creates two new UTXOs, one belonging to Alice and one to Bob. Then there can be a second transaction. So in this example, the two new UTXOs that transaction one produced are used as input and the old UTXO belonging to Bob. So transaction two is a transaction with three inputs and it happens to have three outputs, one going to Alice, one to Bob, one to Charlie. So that's all that basically happens on the Cardano blockchain. At any given point, there are UTXOs, the so-called UTXO set, and then a transaction consumes some of them and produces new ones. So for anything to happen on the blockchain, there must be a transaction. Blockchain is called blockchain because it consists of blocks, and a block is nothing but a bunch of transactions that happen in sequence. Now a Marlow contract will be represented by one UTXO. So in this picture, the UTXOs only have an address and a value associated with them. So they belong to a wallet, Alice's wallet, Bob's wallet, Charlotte's wallet, and they carry some value, some ADA. However, since the dawn of Plutus last year, when Cardano got smart contracts, additionally UTXOs also can carry data, the so-called datum. So that can be more or less arbitrary data. And the way a Marlow contract works is it is represented by UTXO, where the datum is used to represent the state of the contract. So in particular, it says how much money is in the internal accounts of the contract and in which state it is. So what can happen next? What possible steps can happen next? And each time something happens to the contract, this UTXO is consumed by a transaction and a new UTXO at the contract address is created with the updated state as datum. So anytime something happens to a Marlow contract, there must be a transaction. So what can happen? Well, typically the most common things, two things that can happen is that either one of the participants to the contract makes a deposit, which means he or she pays ADA or other tokens from his or her wallet to the contract, to one of the internal accounts of the contract. So that's one common action. And the other one is that one of the participants makes a decision. So sometimes a value has to be set. So maybe there are just two options. So there's a decision between zero and one, for example, or it can also be something like a price, so where one participant has to produce a price. In any case, so these decisions are also quite common in Marlow contracts, and they also change the state of the contract. So also for these decisions, there would be a transaction that consumes the existing UTXO representing the state of the contract and produces a new one, where now this decision has been recorded. There are other types of actions, but deposit and choice are the most common ones. So for anything to happen, there must be a transaction. In any case, it's important to realize that the smart contract 
is nothing active. It's something passive. So a smart contract is not an agent or a bot that can suddenly spring into action and do stuff. It's a passive thing that basically guards a UTXO and determines under which conditions this UTXO can be spent. So for anything to happen, there has to be an external trigger. There has to be a transaction normally coming from a human being, but in principle, it could also come from like a bot, an automatic process that runs on some machine and can submit transactions. So for a Malo contract to make progress, there always has to be a transaction. So typically for each deposit, for each choice, there will be a transaction and that will change the datum that represents the state of the contract. And the Malo contract itself determines which actions are admissible at any given time. So it determines which of the participants to the contract can perform an action, like make a deposit, and which of those actions are actually admissible. For example, for choice, there is normally a valid range of possible choices that can be made. So the contract will enforce that, that at the right time, depending on the state of the contract, only certain participants can perform certain actions. So this is a very important point. For a Malo contract to make progress, one of the participants has to submit a transaction, perform an action. There is an important concept in Malo contracts that everything has a timeout. You can't force a participant to perform an action. Let's say we are in a contract where at this point we expect one of the participants to make a deposit. So maybe the participant doesn't want to make the deposit. You can't force him to do that. So in those cases, there are always timeouts in Malo contracts. So when you wait for an action by one or more participants, you also always have to specify a timeout. We will see that in more detail in the next lecture. And then the Malo contract specifies what should happen if the timeout is hit, if no action has been performed until the timeout happens. And sometimes that can be the end of the contract. So for example, typically a contract starts by one or more of the participants making a deposit. And if none of them does, then there's not much that can happen. But let's say we have a contract with two participants and both should make a deposit and then something else happens. And let's say the first participant makes his deposit, but the second one does not and the timeout is hit. So then what should happen is that the first participant gets his money back, but that can't happen automatically. Again, something only happens on the blockchain and in a Malo contract if there is an external trigger, a transaction submitted. So in these cases, there has to be a transaction that basically pushes the contract forward. So even when we are in this state, a timeout has happened and the contract in principle ended and all the people should get their money back, then for that case, there also needs to be a transaction that actually triggers this finalization of the contract. And normally that transaction can be performed by anybody. Typically the actions in the contract like deposits can only be done by one participant. I mean, only the participant whose money is supposed to be deposited can actually deposit it. But for these special cases where a timeout happened and the contract has to be finalized, anybody can perform that action. Typically, of course, it will be somebody that still has some money in the contract and wants it back. To summarize, the state of a Malo contract is represented as the datum of a UTXO. And then the contract makes progress by one or more of the participants performing actions, typically deposits or making choices. Each of these actions corresponds to a transaction. And at some point the contract is done. And then depending on the contract, there may be the necessity for a final transaction that finalizes it and distributes the rest of the money in the contract. And each of those transactions will be submitted by one of the participants.